almost there, just got one slow girl to go. Boom, and there they go. Oh, that feels so good to get the last milking out of the way for a week on beach mode already. Cars all packed, kids are all strapped in. We're just waiting for Taylor. She's just having a bottle. Frankie looks a bit tired. Can have a sleep on the way over. You can have a sleep, Willie. Right, we're out of here. We're on the move. So, see you, farm. See you in a week. Almost there, so there's the mount straight through there, and these are the port, well this is the port just there, big boat harbour, marina I guess you'd call it. And we're here! It's actually the next morning now, but this is us, number 10. So this is the unit, so it's pretty long and narrow. And what's really cool is you come out here and there's a deck. So they're all the same. I think there's 15 ground floor ones and then there's 15 up top as well. But Willie and Frankie are just down in the pool down there. And it's good because there's a kid's pool right there, which is nice and shallow, whereas that one's a sort of deeper adult pool. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. So there's just a little kitchen there table and then a little lounge so this is what's called a timeshare so what happens is that we come over on friday and we check in at four o'clock and then we stay here for the week and then we leave on the following friday at i think you've got to be up by nine so it's a little bit of an early start but I like to get going anyway so i guess it's like six full days is that friday you leave sort of a bit of a ride off in the friday you get here i suppose you get the night so it's not too bad but the real cool thing about it is that everything's furnished so it's got all the Knives that stays all here. It's got all sort of like rubbish facilities, all the plates, stuff like that. It's already here for you. And then there's a couple of rooms at the back here. So this is where the kids are sleeping, a couple of singles, and then everyone gets a car park. So our car's just there, and then that'll be the unit above us, I think, and the unit next to us. So everyone gets one car park, and then there's more spaces out the front. And that room also has sort of like its own bathroom, or anyone's bathroom, I guess. There's actually a bath in there. Yeah. And then this is our room. So there's a double one here. Need to pull the blinds. <laughs> and our own bathroom with a shower in it. And then if you have people over, what's quite cool is that there is a bed in here. So that just folds down it away like that. Holly's mate's coming over later and she's actually going to sleep there tonight. So you can have, probably have like six people in here, maybe a few more if you sleep on the couches. There's also a laundry just in there with a washing machine and dryer, but Taylor's actually sleeping in there at the moment. It's not raining, but it's a little bit cold and it's real windy. There's also a hot pool, which is down there, which is quite cool too. So everything's here. Oh, and plus some barbecue facilities right down the end. Plus we get Sky on the TV, which is quite cool because we don't have it at home. And we usually come over once in the summer, so usually there's cricket on or something that I can watch, or test match cricket. But we actually have two weeks. So what happens with these timeshares is that you buy like a week and you can sort of add on. So you could buy like four weeks if you wanted to, but you've got to take, or you can take them at different times. And the thing about them too is that there's timeshares sort of located all around the place. So there is one in Queenstown and other places in the world so you can transfer your week you might have to pay a little bit more depending on where you go but yeah it's a pretty cool system i guess quite a lot of people in new zealand have their own beach house we don't so this is like a good substitution i guess because we are right on the beach here but mum and dad were also here so they were here last week and funny enough they were right above us in the exact unit above where we are now but it's handy being on the bottom because it's just so easy just going straight out there and you're at the pool with the kids 
plus the high chair, or not the high chair, but the pram, you don't have to lug it upstairs, so it just makes more sense to be on the bottom. And when you book in your week for next year, or this time next year, you just say you want, or you'd prefer a bottom unit most of the time. No, every time we've got one that we've asked for, so yeah, it's pretty easy. Sun's out, gun's out. That's the apartment straight in there, so you come out the gate there, cross the road and you're pretty much straight here, but there's quite a cool little shop there, Tay Street store, which is pretty busy, pretty handy, it's only a two minute walk to the beach, and what a day for it, beautiful. How good's that? So that's the mount down there, we're not too far away, but it's pretty crazy, I think it's something to do with the ships can't get into port, oh, I think it's mainly the container ships, but there's like probably eight just waiting up there. You can sort of see them. There's one off an island, a couple in there, and then there's like three or four that are dotted around here. So there's one straight out there, there, there. Pretty nuts. Fast forward a couple of days and we are just up at Holly's parents now. So they live in Teepoki, which is about half an hour from where we're staying. I got a real cool spot up here. So look at the big lawn out the front, awesome, eh? And the view up here is seriously cool, although it's a little bit hazy and cloudy today. So that's actually the sea out there. And you can see White Island on a good day and Teepoggy's just in here. Where we're staying at the Mount is sort of behind these hills over there you can't see. And they have kiwi fruit, which is just down there and some avocado trees. You can see the lines just down there. So those are the new trees that they've planted. And I think they're sitting on 13 hectares. So the boundary goes down the road there and down this gut where that native bush is. So it's quite a long, narrow property. Just come for a bit of a ticky tour down the bottom here. So there's avo trees that have been planted, I think two years old. I have to ask John. So there is a paddock here, and then there's another one just over the hill there. And these are actually picked a couple of weeks ago. It was their first pick, but you can see the fruit set. See those little balls? That is the fruit for next year forming. Oh, and here's some here actually, so they must have uh, been too small at harvest time, we're not quite ready. Well, there's a good bunch over there, eh? So, nice to have a fresh supply of avocados. <laughs> Grabbing a few to take home now, but these big established trees, so they they don't look the best, but they're looking a lot better than what they were when, when John got here. So they were pretty neglected, and he's given them a lot of loving. And they are producing, although there's not a lot on them at the moment. Fruit didn't set last year for some reason, I'm not sure why, but there is a few on them that we can sort of just pick. Pick with a hand picker. Oh, that's a good one, eh? Oh, look at that. That's a goodie. Just picked a couple of this tree, so this is a nice one, it's got quite a bit of fruit on it. And they're not too bad size wise either. Look at that, that's not a bad avo. It's a little bit small but good enough to eat. It's quite a cool spot down here and in the summer it's real nice to bring a few refreshments down and sort of have them while the kids run around they can go and play hide and seek or whatever. But every year when I clean the calf sheds out, John brings his trailer over and gets the wood chip and this is it just here so it goes around the base of the trees just to sort of keep the weeds down and keep them all nice and tidy looking clean. So here's John here this is Holly's father or my father-in-law so tell us a little bit about your orchard John. Uh, well this used to have avos in it um, years ago so we've reinvented the wheel and laid some more planted some more. How many are in this paddock? There's um, oh, about 140 we've planted in here. 140 Many plus the, the old trees that are here about, as well. About another 34 of those oh, mature yeah. trees, yeah. Um, and then there's, so there's 140 in here. There's some over there. Yeah, about another 110 over there. Another 110 and there's also some over the brow too. Yeah. Um, so these are three year old. We just had our first pick. Well, there's um, a bit average, but it was the first pick, so we're hoping for uh, bigger and better. It's a bit of a punt because we're so high up. It's a bit cold for pollination, but um, oh, they're, they're nice to come and have a gin under, eh? So yeah, we're just having a go. Yeah, and you get something out of them. Yeah, they grow. They grow really well here, but it's just that uh, that fruit set. But yeah, 
early days. It looks good though, eh? It is a cool little spot yeah. here. Yeah, it's a great spot. And it's sort of, um, I guess it's better to have them in trees than, than just grass and graze a few beefies. It's sort of, yeah. Yeah. Makes a bit more financial sense. So all up there's about, what did you say? 430 avocado trees. Yeah. And then you've got also two hectares of kiwi fruit. Green kiwi. Green kiwi, yeah. Green. So the big types over here are, are green and gold. Gold's really expensive. It's, it's well, really expensive to get the rights to it. Um, so green's probably the more common one. And all up land-wise? Uh, 14 hectares. And he's just got a few beefies. So here they come because one of these, which is that fella right there at the front, he's the wagyu I read a couple of years ago. and brought him over here to come grazing. So we're gonna go halves on it. Oh, he's looking all right. The others are Angus, so they're way more stocky, whereas this is half dairy. Pretty friendly. He is a tank. Look at the size of him. Loving that, though. Oh, here he comes. He's pretty tall, eh? Like, like real tall, just not as wide. Again, that's a pretty good comparison. So yeah, definitely, definitely narrower, which you'd expect being half Jersey anyway. But, mister, you're probably not far off going in the freezer, really. So there were three of them. He was the steer, and there were two heifers, so Mike's got them down at his place, which I should go and check on. And we're doing the same with him, so we'll probably take a half of one each. So yeah, in total it'll be one, but we'll do halves. But yeah, he's looking pretty good. Oh, look how friendly. Hey, matey. Look at this. Six chickens. Six eggs. Girls are doing pretty well. Real cool space over here, though. These are all fruit trees, and oh, there were the chickens there. And a real cool veggie garden. Heaps of stuff growing. Looks real good. Debbie's pretty into her gardening. And John's just built this new shed, so I think he finished it back in February, somewhere around there. And it's exactly the same company that we built ours through, which is a Greenwood, except this one is 10 metres deep instead of 9, and it doesn't have any centre poles. So you can move stuff around real easy, but heaps of space for all his toys. And they're all on electric doors, so it is a real cool shed. Heaps of concrete out the front too, which is pretty cool, and he put a Put a bit of a lean to out the side, use a bit of the space, which has actually got a shower and a toilet in the corner here, I think. I have to double check. Oh, yeah, toilet, shower, basin. There's also deer fencing around here, so all these little top paddocks are deer fence because there's probably nine or ten fellow deer that are in there. There is a stag with them and they'll probably be in that bush at the moment but there is quite a lot of wild deer around if you get your binocs out at night you can see quite a lot down in that paddock down the end there this is all native bush up through there which is really nice there's also a lot of deer fencing around here so these little paddocks up the top are all fenced because there's nine or ten fellow deer that live in here there is a stag with them they don't come out till sort of night time chuck a little bit of corn over the fence and they come up here but there's also quite a lot of wild deer around. But if you get the binoculars out, you can usually see some down in that little bottom paddock sometime, which isn't theirs, it's the neighbours, but yeah, occasionally you see some through here. They even come up and run right round through here. And they get into the fruit trees around the back there too. So it is a pretty cool place here, and it's a bit unfortunate about the weather because you can see right out to White Island on a good day, eh? Yep. But how long have you been here for now? Uh, we've just ticked over four years. Yeah, four and, years on a month sort of thing. And before that, you're up in up in the big smoke of Auckland. Yeah, up in Auckland, we're doing a bit of engineering there. There are Howick people. Yeah, it's a great spot. But uh, this beats this, it. This is this is great. This is um, great for the grandkids, which is the main reason we moved. Yeah, and it's real handy. Like for when we're at home, it's only uh, oh, it's about two hours over here, so it's not that far really. Too many days in the darkness. Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to 
pretty much it for this video guys so i hope you enjoyed it something a little bit different and next time i'll see you back at the farm